constitutional and configurational isomers, stereocenters and stereoisomers. Have you got it? This short video quiz assesses your ability to recognize two compounds as constitutional or configurational isomers from their drawings and your ability to identify compounds as chiral or achiral based on their drawings. The quiz consists of three questions. It's meant to be taken after you have studied the material and think you understand it. During the presentation, you'll be asked to pause the video, try to solve the problems yourself, and only then to continue. It won't be hardly as effective if you jump to the solution immediately. Okay, here we go. In each case, indicate whether the two compounds are constitutional or configurational isomers or identical. Pause the video, see what you come up with, and start it again. Okay, we're back. Did you figure this out? First two. Uh, well, what we can see here is that we have two methyls on the same carbon. That's a 1,1 dimethylcyclohexane. And in the other case, we have a 1,2 dimethylcyclohexane. And since the names are completely different, this has to be a constitutional isomer. Okay, second case. Uh, the bonding pattern is exactly the same. The only difference is over here. In these two OHs, one is up, one is down. That's what we call a configuration isomer. Now, what do you think about this third one? We have three methyl groups. It's a 1,3,5 trimethyl. So it looks like they're either configurational isomers or identical. Well, it looks like we've got a reversal, don't we? So are these enantiomers? Are these mirror images? Well, remember that a an antimer has to be a non-superimposable mirror image. And the cool thing here is that with this structure that we have on the right, let's think about it. You know what? If I go right through here, and likewise, if I go right through here, I think you see there's a mirror plane. So it actually does not have an enantiomer. This is the same compound, identical. It's a compound with a mirror plane. And this last one. Also a bit of a trick. What do you think? You no, know, they're two propanols, so they're not constitutional isomers. Again, configurational or identical. Well, here's the deal. That is not a stereocenter because it only has three different groups on it. H, OH, and CH3, not four. And you have to have four different groups on a carbon to be a configurational isomer. So again, these two are identical. A little bit of a trick question there, I think. Number two, identify which of the following compounds are chiral. Well, I'll give you about 15 seconds to do that, period. And then we're going to do it. You don't need to pause the video. Just see if you can do it in the 10 seconds it takes me to pause. Well, here we go. Okay, so there is a mirror image right through there. Okay, how about the next one? Well, there is no mirror image across this way. Actually, that what there is here is what's called a C2 axis. If we rotate this 180 degrees, we get the same thing. But it's not a mirror plane. So this one here looks like it's chiral. What we could do is draw the enantiomer and just make sure it is not actually superimposable. I draw the enantiomer by just switching the wedges up and down. What do you think? Definitely mirror images. What happens if I spin this around this axis right here? Well, what's going to happen is this group here, which is down, is going to end up up. And this group over here, which is up, when I spin it around, is going to end up down. And you see that's the same thing. But it's not the one we started with. So this one is chiral. And how about this one over here on the right? Do we have a plane of symmetry? Well, it almost looks like 
almost looks like there could be a plane of symmetry here. But look at this. There's an ethyl group and a methyl group. So those are not the, they're not reflections of each other. So this one is chiral. Two chiral, one not chiral. Okay, number three, here's a little challenge. These are just a bit more challenging. Chiral or achiral? Pause the video, see if you can figure this out, and then start again. All right, we're back. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I would do in a situation like this. I would redraw these. I'm going to draw these back here as regular hexane rings. And these two carbons are going to be these two carbons here. And at the one on the left, I have a methyl down. And on the one on the right, I have an OH up. I don't know. Maybe you could have seen it. But now I see that there's definitely a mirror plane right through there. And this one is achiral because of that mirror plane. Okay, same thing with this one. Let's redraw it. We'll draw the hexagon. We'll make this carbon this one and this carbon this one. Notice how I'm sort of matching the downward, this guy right here, this carbon. That's kind of the same. All right, this OH is down. So H is down. And once again, there's a mirror plane. So this one is achiral. All right, the one on the right. Oh, this is an evil one. Do you see the trick? Look carefully. This is an ethyl. So is this. Uh-oh. This is an ethyl. So is this. There are no stereocenters, no carbon that has four different groups on it. They all have two or three different groups. So this one also is achiral. And all three of these are achiral compounds. <laughs> there you go. So remember, constitutional isomers are fundamentally different compounds with different connections among the same atoms. They'll have different names. So they might have different numbering different prefixes, a different root, a different length of the chain, something like that. Configurational isomers have stereogenic centers and have the same constitution but different relative orientations of groups. No matter how you rotate the bronze or rotate them as a whole, they will never align perfectly. They will have the same name with the same suffix, the parent, the prefix numbering, and prefix names. Often, redrawing a structure a different way can help us see whether a compound is chiral or achiral. And, as we shall see next, there may be an even easier way to do this. Well, I hope that helped, and I hope you've got it.